This church dates from 1100, whilst the choir dates from 1200. The church's tower was added much later, in 1863. Here we can find an organ by Hins, which was built in 1734. I want to ask Dirk Molinar, one of the two organists here, to tell us more about this highly ornamental organ. The ornamentation has generated some criticism because people think it's little overdone. Look, it was the high Baroque period and a lot of effort was put into wood carving. This carving is somewhat overwhelming. It also has to do with the wishes of the town's burghers. They commissioned the wood carving as they believed it increased their chances of getting into heaven. To enter heaven, you must do a lot of good deeds on earth. So, by commissioning ornamentation for a church organ, which was considered a good thing to do, you had more chance of getting into heaven. The decoration on this organ contains a lot of heraldic elements. These sideboards are huge. They probably made a mistake because the sideboards run into the ground of the gallery and you can't see it, so it probably has no purpose. The woodcarver may have also thought that it was to be used for a 16-foot pedal tower. We don't know whether it was made by Strauweg or by van der Haven. And the wood carving is from a much later date, 1734. So there are some questions. When you look at the small organ behind the organist, which is called the positive, Hins created a seven-pipe field with towers. But the wooden boards are wider than usual. This is typical of Hins's style. There are a lot of pipes from the Prestant 4 in the front. You have to keep the right dimensions. The upper fields and the side fields are loose pipes, but it fits in with Hins's ideas. This is one of Hins's first organs, and he kept this model for a long time. Hins got the idea of David from the statue in St. Michael's Church in Zwolle. When he married the widow of the organ builder, Franz Kasper Schnitke, he got the responsibility of maintaining the organ in Zwolle, which Schnitke had built. And this organ has a big statue of David under the middle tower. After Lanes, he didn't build any more statues of David. This is because of the local woodcarvers and the town burghers. Why are there crowns on the pedal towers? These crowns come from the Schnitger school. You can also see these curls and the open construction. The curve of the lips from the positive and all the pipe fields run identically, up and down. Is that also the case with Hinz's later organs? No, if you look at the lips at the side towers, the curve of the lips are the other way round. In Harlingen and Bolsvaard, for example. Is it well so that that underste tussenveld weer na de hoofdkast toe loopt en dat er ook vaak grotere pijpen zijn? Hier zijn die pijpen. In this tower, you can see nine pipes, and in other organs from Hins, there are seven pipes. Bolsvaard, er zit wel verschil in. En hier staan er negen in de in de pedaaltorens, maar bij andere orgels, als het de zestien voet is, staan er weer zeven in. So there is a difference.
This is called the manual coupler. And here you can see something that looks rather like the gear lever in a modern car. What we see here is the C-sharp side of the pedal coupler with the reeds. The pedal pipe is on both sides of the grate. Hins did this at Lanes for the first time, and he continued to do so until 1785, when he made the organ at Outhauser Maiden. All of the reeds are original, except these pipes from the two-foot cornet. These pipes have been rebuilt. Ik haal een van de voorslagen weg, zodat je iets kunt zien van het binnenwerk. En dan zie je Here we can see the valves for the pedal. Ventielen van het pedaal. Dat eikenplankje met het This piece of oak is not original. This is also not original. Origineel, dat zou de vroeger anders leren zakjes veel beter voor. This ensures that the wind doesn't leak out. Door de windlade uh, wegloopt. Alles moest luchtdicht afgesloten zijn. If the organ was restored nowadays, we would no longer do it this way. Helemaal zoals vroeger gedaan zijn met die leren zakjes. This is a modern solution. A ring of lead with a plate. One of the two plates is tied on to the bottom while the other plate is loose. There are different methods, but this is the one kind of load, it is loose. And the other plate is there, it is fast placed on the bottom. The advantage of such an solution is that it is much longer holdable, right? The advantage of this solution is that it has a longer working life. Leather is much weaker. In the 1950s, electric heating was installed in the church. And because of this, a lot of the pulpits became damaged. The maintenance of the organ was also done in a modern way, which old organs do not like. This is material from 1733, 1734, or even older. You are now looking to the front. You are now looking to the front. From the back. The Quinterdain 16 foot was moved a tone lower in the 19th century. That's why you can now see new material on the top of the organ pipe. It is there temporarily to be restored later on. This is the location of the rohr flout. These are the so called chimneys on the pipes. They come from the German word rohr. And here we can see the rest of the rohr flout. And then we go to the back of the organ. En dan heb je daar de mixtuur, dat is de mixtuur, 4, 5, 6 sterk in de diskant. Dan heb je hier de toeters aan het eind This van de laag. This is the trumpet de and the vox humana. The, vox humana. the model the vox sounds humana, just as it looks. Is, When I put my hands around my mouth, hold, hold. this way, with a small opening, then the vox humana met sounds met like met. this. Dan krijg je zo'n oeklank, zo'n zachte oeklank. En het is nog helemaal een originele vox humana. A complete, heel, heel original, delicate and unique heel stop. Heel unique. And, and when we look here, so kijkt, we can see, can see the, the biggest the pipes of the pedal. pedal. And the One pipe has a soldered metal strip. strip. This is because, over time, the pipe has had to be reinforced. Later on, it will be restored properly. These pipes are a little too short and have been lengthened with paper for the time being. The moment the government approves it, these pipes will be made to the right length with metal. The sound will be improved too. Look here, you can see a pipe that has been shortened in the past. In the 1960s, the emphasis of restoration was to try and improve the old. But now, 30 years later, we've decided that the pipes would be restored in the original way. You can see here that the front is made of tin. When one compares the colour of the back of the organ pipes to the front, you can see that the colour is lighter than the colour of the pipes which stand in the organ case. The pipe inside the organ is an alloy of 80% lead to 20% tin. 
It is exactly the opposite with the pipes in the front. Unfortunately, all of the front pipes were renewed in 1922. The only original pipes of the Prestant 8 foot are these ones in the organ. It is one octave. I'm now taking the great F sharp out of the block, which is called a stavel, which is a dialect word for a boot. It is also a generally used word within the organ building. Here we can see the tongue. The shallot is covered with leather. This is a leathered tongue. This tuning pin selects the right pitch of the tone. En dus deze ratelt dus eigenlijk en deze beker die vormt zo het geluid met zo'n oerklank. This pipe and probably the tongue are both original. And this is which holds the things together. Met de originele tong en daar zit het spietje dat het spul bij elkaar houdt. Dus dan heb je stevel, kop, keel, tong, beker, stemkruk. Now I'm putting it all back in the boot. I am going to tune.